Good morning and happy Friday. We're covering our uh, Good Friday and Easter Sunday services. We are in Genesis 17 and Genesis 22. Uh, so today we'll focus on Genesis 22. Uh, we asked this central question, uh, uh, can we put our faith in the God who will provide? And of course the answer is yes we can. That was a refrain from the text in Genesis 22 in which the son Isaac asked the father, Father, we, we have all the stuff needed for a sacrifice except the lamb. Where is this lamb? And Abraham's answer is, the Lord will provide. So we have a God who specializes in provision. Our creator, uh, he gives us our daily bread and he provides all that is necessary for our life. I want you to take a moment and give thanks and share one with another as a thanksgiving offering to God. How has God provided for you? You tell a story, tell a, a, an episode in your life, it, share one with another, and let's give it as a thanks offering to God. He is so wonderful. He provides, whether it's in a, in a, 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 a climactic moment of our life or whether it's the everyday step-by-step -step provision. Our Lord is so wonderful. And after you do that, I invite you to consider uh, the implications of this wonderful death, burial, and resurrection that the Lord provided himself. But ultimately, Genesis 22 is pointing us towards Jesus. The parallels are significant that Abraham only had one son, and God gives us his one and only son. And they were looking for a lamb to be sacrificed. And Jesus is that lamb, the lamb of God. And that on the third day, they found the place in which uh, this sacrifice should take place. And it's on the third day that Jesus rose again out of that sacrifice in the same geographical area. The land of Moriah is the land of Jerusalem. Some scholars or commentators or preachers have even gone so far to say, could it be that the very hill on which um, Abraham and Isaac ascended to, to offer sacrifice, the very location, could that be actually Golgotha? Could that be the same place where Jesus was hanging on the cross? We, we don't know. But those are the types of things that our Lord does to point us always forward. What's so astounding and so striking is that sometimes we, as humans, can, can miss it. And now... Uh, is, an, is an opportunity to think through what is it that the scriptures say about Jesus Christ in the Old Testament that we now know in the New Testament. So just take a moment and, and ask yourselves around the group, maybe, maybe you've never been asked this question, maybe you have, but let's ask the question, what does the Old Testament say about the coming of Jesus, his death on our behalf, and his resurrection? Perhaps you pull out your phone and do some Google searching, or perhaps a scripture comes to mind, but just take a moment and reflect on that. It's an important reflection. It's the same one that happened on the day of Jesus' resurrection, as he himself appeared to two men on the road to Emmaus. So I invite you, after you have a little dialogue about the Old Testament prophecy going forward to Jesus, would you turn to Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, and read together uh, the story uh, of the encounter on the road to Emmaus. It begins in verse 13. And there's such a wonderful point there in which, as we think about our church as Living Word Church, that Jesus here on this road was expounding, was taking the scriptures from the Old Testament and explaining to these two how from Moses through the prophets, God has been telling this story, that it's the same story. And they say, wow, weren't our hearts burning within us when he was speaking the scriptures to us? That's my prayer, that is Living Word Church, when God's word is spoken and taught and preached, that it would burn in our hearts. It would, that living word would come in and do its work and would cause each one of us to grow and move forward in faith. <clears throat> whether a guest or whether a longtime Christian, that God's word would have the same impact. It would illuminate, it would open up our eyes. So I'm going to ask you to, to read that passage, and then would you pray? <clears throat> pray for our church. Pray the Living Word Church would be able to equip 
the believers so that we can expound the scriptures to our neighbors, to our friends, that when we have encounters just like this on the road to Emmaus, we could be used by God to open up the scriptures and explain clearly to someone, God has been telling this story. God has been doing this all along. So that we want to pray, number one, that our, our believers, our members, those who come, will grow and mature in our understanding of God's word. Number two, would you pray for our encounters? Pray that we will also have divine encounters, divine appointments, that God will ordain our steps and help us connect with those who have not yet heard, those who are seeking, those who are wondering and have questions that God will cause our paths across and that we'll be equipped to share the gospel and then thoroughly pray that they'll receive it with gladness. They'll open their hearts and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and begin to follow him in a faithful relationship. So I'm asking you to pray those things in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a wonderful group. We'll look forward to see you on Sunday.